It is Sunday. As always on Lely's Hangout, we have all interesting stories. Tonight is not any different, but the only difference is the story about a mother. A mother that's lost a son. And it's not just losing a son, but lost a son to suicide. But what is the story behind her story? You know, last month in South Africa, the whole nation went into rampage because of one lady, Lufano, 15-year-old girl, who was bullied by her mates with no particular reason. This made Lufano to go into a moment of depression within a day and actually decided to end it all with suicide. The story of Jacqueline Mutera is not any different. The only difference is she lost a son, a son that she will never get back, but a story she will live to tell forever. Ladies and gentlemen, without a further ado, allow me to bring you my guest, Jacqueline Mutere. My name is Liquiani Eli, and this is against all odds. Hello, Jacqueline, and welcome to our studios. I'm glad you made it on time despite the electricity problems. Thank you very much, Eli. Good evening, all. Good evening, Eli. Good evening, all um, viewers and uh, listeners. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me. It is equally a pleasure to have you on against all odds. And remember, if you're watching this cast, you can join us on the comment section. Send in your questions, send in your comments, and most importantly, share the cast to any other person that needs to hear this. Bullies took her son to his grave. Jacqueline Mutere, kindly introduce yourself and then uh, let's proceed. Um, so my name is Jacqueline. Uh... Uh, I'm a widow, and uh, I I have five children. Uh, I always consider Chichi my son. Um, so st I still consider one of my children. So I have five children. Um, the oldest is almost is thirty. Yes, she, was, she turned thirty this year, and the youngest is uh, thirteen, um, and, a, and a mother of five. And um, Chichi was a can I say the middle child? Yeah, because it's number three. Then there are two behind him. Uh, there are two in front of him. Two girls in front of him. And then a girl and, and a boy behind him. So that, that's what, that, that's my family. Um, I, I'm a I head a community-based organization. It's called Grace Agenda that supports uh, survivors of uh, sexual violence from our post-election violence of 207, 208. And um, that's how I, I run my life, doing uh, a lot of activism around the uh, around, around those human rights violations. Um, and it's um it's strange that you would choose to have a, the program today on a Sunday because and specifically this time because this is about exactly the time that it happened and it was a Sunday and um it um it, it's just much more heavy and much more poignant when you talk about it because at around this time it's nine so it's about nine thirty five yes that is when we were just running around and then um, trying to wonder what happened I my little daughter. So, so sorry to get into the story, but it, just to give a bit of context and background, my little daughter ran and, and um, we were actually preparing for bed, just like now. And um, she, my son, the one who follows Chichi, who was called Jerry Ogola, came in and, and kept telling the little girl, come and see what Chichi's doing on the, on the, on. come and see this game he's playing, come and see this game he's playing. You come and see. And the little girl didn't want to go. She said, you're disturbing me. I want to sleep. I'm preparing for school. And then he'd go out and then he'd come back. Please come and see. So just to get him off her back, she went to, to see and she ran back and told me, mommy, mommy, come and see. Chichi's playing a game. He's swinging on his neck and his tongue is hanging out. And so I just rushed out immediately and I went to see, I went to see him. And immediately I opened the door. I, I found a sight to behold. Um, a sight that I would never wish on any parent, a sight that I'd never wish on, on even my worst enemy, because it is something that breaks your insides. To you, you realize um, um, you, you realize how limited you are in this life, and that there's really no. There's, sorry, I'm just adjusting the light, and that there's really no reason to ever, ever be proud about anything or, or, or to take to take life for granted. 
And so um, dealing with the consequences of that is what has um, helped me also. Um, the, the, um, the impact it had on my family, the impact it had on my children, on siblings, on, on my, the community that I live in, on how also people perceive me. And uh, because it's for that reason that I speak, I speak first of all to remove the stigma around uh, suicide because people just don't want to talk about it. Um, there's this concept that the people who commit suicide are very selfish. I, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around that concept that uh, people who commit suicide are selfish. Selfish in what manner? Because in retrospect, you know, when in retrospect everything is 2020 vision, you get a lot of perspective and you realize that that person, at least for my son and for many of the youth and the, some of the women and mothers that I've been able to, to, uh, to have been in, uh, I've been able to talk with, they say and they speak that it's as if they, they want to remove themselves as being part of the problem because they realize that they're creating a problem or their presence has got some, is, is, is problematic. And since you're in, unable to solve it and they're unable to solve it, they just decide to do the easy thing and, and just get rid of get rid of themselves and so that everybody's happy. This is I, I my, my, my perspective on it. And I say this with a lot of caution because Every situation is so, so unique. I, I cannot put it down pat that what works for me or what happened to me is what happened to another parent. And that's the story of my son and uh, the impact of um, his action later on on the family and uh, how we've been able to walk this path up till today. So by now we were just rushing around and um, the, the neighbor went to, uh, I, 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 my little girl got the caretaker, we got into the car, went to the, the first hospital, did not have oxygen, second hospital, did not have oxygen, third hospital had oxygen, but by the time we reached there, um, it was all over, it was all over. So I went in, into the emergency room and I kept asking them, why don't you, I, I walked out briefly, came out, of the, came out of the room where they were handling him and I just went up to the balcony and I just pled to God and said, God, please help me. Help me. I don't understand. I don't do, I can't do anything. I don't know what to do. I have no power. I've got no, I've got no nothing. God, please help me. Um, and, and just give me strength. And when I walked in, it was all over. TJ had gone. And um, today, um, you can see, I, I took pictures. I asked my, my neighbor who had come with me that day to come to the hospital. I didn't ask her. She just, she just came with me um, to take pictures of him. And you could see the, the line where he had um, used his exercise, his exercise, um, these stretches, these com compressors and uh, th these kind of yeah. things um, to, 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 to hang himself. And so that line, that, that you know, some scenes I cannot, uh, you cannot repeat, you, it, it, it just plays over and over in your mind, over and over again, um, until when we meet again. I mean, I cannot so help but I cannot help but just to try and figure out how things played out that night. And as you say, it was a Sunday, almost the same time you are having this discussion. If you don't mind, Jacqueline, can you take me back to the moment and put it into perspective? Um, what was happening with Chichi at that time? Did did you stand at any moment and ask what was happening with my son? Did anything reflect to you that there was something wrong with him? Um, when Chichi finished form, we went into form one. We went into a good national school, but I don't know what happened there. Something happened to him in that school and it started becoming problematic. And I realized this when he would come for half time, it's, um, he doesn't want to go back to school or it's just a, a, a bit that much more harder for him to go to school. He'd use any excuse if there's a, a fees balance and they're told to come back. You know, he'd just quickly rush back home and say, you know, let him come back and, um, and connect with the parents so that he can be, they can take him back to school. And he just, eventually one day he just told me he's not going back to that school. So of course, as a parent, you just have to do due diligence and as, 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 uh, get him into another school. So we did get him into another school. I'm sorry, I'm adjusting the light on the laptop there. That's helping me. Um, so we took him to yet another school. Um, in that school, he he went, he was in, I think I, I, as I reflect and I think about it, that is where the problem started. Because I go and see him on visiting day, he's, he's withdrawn. 
he's not happy he just makes demands he's a, he was normally a very happy boy you know you'd see he wants to talk to me but he he, he he's is very self conscious about issues he'd move close to me or at times just doesn't want to associate with me or uh, quite a bit he's happy you can see he's happy and relieved to see me but something had happened and so one day he just um he came home i think it was one of the holidays and he just said he's not going back to that school i said he's not going back to school or he's not going back to that school he said i'm not going back to that school so i said is there something has been happening what, what is the problem he just told me i'm not going back to that school And so the more I pushed him, he's the sort of person that you push him, he withdraws much more. Um, you push him, he withdraws much more. So I left it at that. So um, we got him into yet another school. Now by this time we have traversed about three schools, and we've come from in between it is from two and from three. We have, now we have reached from four. And in from four, um, he started started showing signs of neglect. He didn't want to, and then he also became very quarrelsome. And, um, and when it's called on, that means you couldn't act on him, uh, ask him anything. He would constantly, you know, he'd do battle with you. Somebody who's normally a, a very peaceful boy, a very happy boy, he'd do battle on, on any small issue, and he was extremely volatile. And so I asked myself what was going on, what was happening to me. And so I kept telling him, you know, teaching these results are just going to be yours because now he would do two days today, and do, th- and then next week he do. Th- Three days. Then the next week he do two days. So out of one week he um he averaged about two and a half days if I can if I can say that. And so I started noticing that he also started neglecting himself, even um you know wanting to go to school on certain days and and also excuses a lot of excuses for not wanting to go to school uh, and not wanting to meet with his friends. He met with um one or two of his friends uh, who are very close to him. But then um, he said that uh, he he is not going to go to school. But he need, for him to go to school, you have to fix his bike. Um, the tire, there's something wrong with the tire, so we'd fix the bike. He'd ride the bike to school for two days, then he wouldn't use it. Then again, he'd stay for two days. Why aren't you going to school? I need to keep myself fit. I need to go and play football, but I don't have the boots. Then we get the boots. So uh, so now what do we do? So then after the he stops now going for football practice. Then again, he just stays in his room. He's drawing his stuff. He's watching a lot of movies. Um, throughout the night, when people are asleep, when people are awake, he's asleep. When people are asleep, he's awake. So he gets to problems because he wants to boom his music at night. And I tell him, you have to consider the neighbors. Really, you can't do this. It's even we want to sleep, and that would cause a um would, would cause a lot of um strife between us. And so um. It became a bit difficult to manage him because he became also extremely volatile, and he had a he had a very good relationship with the sister that he follows. He follows a girl, and they had a very good relationship. But for some reason, she was the person that he sort of like him, um, she, her, and and me were some of the people who felt the brunt of his can I say his violence, his his um, his vitriol, his bile. A, a lot of it was towards just the two of us, and so. Um, he won he wanted to beat her several times and I'd try and stop him and when we tried stopping he would think that I was defending and of course I was defending her he was a big guy he would really, he, he would beat her beat her down any day so one of these days he uh, he wanted to beat her uh, we in uh, we intervened together with my other other daughter so he wanted to he punched her and we beat him and threw him out of the house and um he came back actually even um if you see if you take a look behind me i think from there there's sort of a, a cabinet of of glasses uh, i don't know if you can see the other side also um yeah sure i can i can when we, yeah when i know you are struggling go, because you have no light but it's okay yeah yeah so he broke everything that was glass in this house and just had throwing tantrums in fights in 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 brawls with her with me and me trying and all we do, we wouldn't fight him we would just be defending this girl so it became to the to the extreme point where he would um, he would be we would wait until i'm not there to start a fight and then there you know so my daughter would call me mommy he's done this to me mommy he's beaten me he's done this and when i come home of course it's, it's um it's a it's a call because i have to I have to tackle him and then i realized when i the the, um, the last time We, it was a really bad fight um he had be- he would wanted to beat her and i happened to be there and we pulled him out and he held onto the the steel door of the steel the steel frame of the door the chuma and he broke it literally with the fury that that that, that he had within him and um uh, so i slapped him 
told him now you need to get out now you're not staying here that would mean you have to decide if you if you want to your own you want to live by your own rules i'm willing to get a place for you but you can't live in this kind of contentious place in this kind of contentious atmosphere so he went downstairs and i went into my room so when he came back he just came he just came to my room and he just stood he just stood in front of me and he just cried i i looked into his eyes he looked into my eyes and i was wondering so I mean, what's the problem i asked him so she why did you make me do that so he didn't answer me he didn't he, he's he was just crying he just stood there looked at me and he cried and so from that time on you know he locked himself in his room and we were neighbors because we used to call each other neighbor and uh, each time we used to go to bed too loud i tell him neighbor please you you i can't sleep you have to reduce it and he had complained to me severely that um, he had headaches so telling of course you've got headaches you're always on the screen you're always watching tv you're always watching you're all on the phone you're on the laptop of course you're going to have headaches your eyes are strained and so then he started neglecting himself he was somebody who had a very healthy appetite he would pick at he would pick at his food the times that wake up with kept food for him he hasn't touched it um or he, when he decided he's going to eat after two or three days he comes you dressed in his underwear uh, to the to the table and tell him you can't sit like this go and dress he'd go and he wouldn't eat again he'd like to sit in the dark um and tell him and, and, and you know stop come and sit with us sit in the light just come and sit with us there's nothing wrong with you you want to sit there and sit with the dog he had a, a pet dog that belonged to my son and so we'd hear the dog yelping once in a while and you usually punch punch the dog and beat the dog so that's when i realized that there was a problem so about 6 months before that he had come and told me my mate think i need counseling so i said what do you need counseling for because i thought it was good issues because he's usually he's quite a shy boy and maybe he might and the school that he had now got him into was a big one and he might have, and he might be having going he might he might have been going through some adolescent kind of challenge where he's unable to maybe get a girlfriend so he said it's not but I, it's not a girl but um, I, i just need counseling set it up for me i said okay fine let's say we'll set it up and then when i did try to follow up with him and ask him are you ready for the counseling then he would just shut down on me so i reached out to my brothers i reached out to um, um his cousins that he had a relationship with and told him you know told them can you please come and talk to him and just find out what the problem is he's just not responding So when we went, we went home December then he had done his KCSC uh, he came and reported to me he did the, he, he didn't find it was bad it, it, it wasn't very bad he did it like this he did it like that I said okay fine let's wait for the results when the results came he didn't do he of course he hadn't performed very well and uh, I think that is what now made him slide deeper now into into depression because now he wouldn't talk he wouldn't eat he would just hold his head um and 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 um, sit in the corridor and hold his head and, and look down and I tell him get up when i'm cooking in the kitchen he comes in his boxers he sits there just less and he just sits there and he just looks at me he doesn't talk he doesn't do anything he just sit there and and just not talk and, and i ask him so why is sitting on the dustbin this bring one of the stools and just sit and uh, just sit with me because he liked he enjoyed um, hanging around me when, when I'm cooking at times because he told me when we cook it like this cook this leaf he liked eating maize and beans in a certain way the way I cook it in a certain way so he said to me mommy today don't do it like that today do this and for me so I said but those ingredients are asking for I can't be not it's too late so he didn't eat that night Uh, so those are some of the changes that we noticed that he had withdrawn from being a previously very happy boy um he he became a very withdrawn and very extremely hostile person and um those are the things that um, got me thinking even long before it actually happened and so the one day just after he had gone to get his results slip the um, the principal of the school called me and asked me is this a, have you had what's wrong with this boy i said what do you mean what have you what have you noticed yes, jackie this, this. i i want uh, jackie sorry 
I will, I will like you to take a breather so that uh, we come back from where the principal called you. And if you're watching this story, you know, it's, uh, I will let Jackie do the talking tonight because this is a personal issue to her. And for everybody that is watching, you're probably wondering why are we even having this discussion? It's a discussion that we need to have because there's a lot of bullying that is happening in our schools, national level, international level. And the consequences are very dire. So why is it important to have the discussion? Because we must have the discussion. My name is Likwiani Eli and I'm with Jacqueline Mutere. And uh, shortly after this, we'll be back, uh, coming back to her. But allow us to take a break and we'll be right back. So enjoy the stream and continue sharing and invite others. I never said I'm perfect You told your mom I'm your friend I'm not Your girlfriends think we just housemates You ain't proud of me anymore And I can tell you wanna go Since I lost my arms I guess it feels so strange I'm only human I need no sympathy, I need love And if you can love me You really don't need to stay I'm only human I need no sympathy, I need love Thank you so much. That is a Shuchi Lumumba. This song is I'm Only Human. Welcome again to Against All Odds. Tonight it's a very emotional story we are telling. We're telling a story of a mother. And you know when it comes to mothers, sometimes it's more deeper than it looks because they are the givers of life. And when they see life taken away from them, it means more to them than any other bystanders. You know, according to a 2017 report from the World Health Organization, Kenya was ranked among the countries with the highest level of bullying in schools. And then the report further goes and says at the national level, bullies in Kenyan schools stands at 57% for students who are bullied on one or more days in a month. If that doesn't scare you, then we need to have a discussion. Again, let's welcome Jackie Mutere. Jackie, karibu sana, and uh, I hope you've had time to breathe out. Yeah. Uh, we'll be going to the comment sections later on. But I want to bring you back to the school when the principal called you, and even before the principal called you, you know, in 2019, there was a report that was actually, rather a story that was published in the Nairobi News by Amina Wako, a journalist there. And the story indicated there was this school, I'm not going to mention names, a national school, that prefects were being accused of physically assaulting their peers because they have been given too much power. So I'm interested to know what this principal actually told you when you went to him to collect the results. Jackie Mutera. Um, thank you. When, I, I, when we talked, he asked me, is there something wrong with your son? I said, I asked him, why do you say that? And um, he said, I, I don't, he, he's not behaving very well. I said, so what have you noticed? He says, it's just not, um, He's not, he's, he's not connecting properly. You know, Chichi would talk and he'd, he'd stop in mid-sentence. He'd, 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 he'd be unable to express himself, so he'd use his hands. And then when he, when he loses his train of thought, and then he'd, he'd just say, forget it. 
So he said that um, he's unable to concentrate. He's got very poor. He's got poor concentration skills. And I said, so, but you're the headmaster. You should have, um, even if the teacher had noticed a problem, you should have been the one of the people to tell me about this. Then he told me, why don't you take your son to hospital? I said, if it's a problem, I will, I'm taking him to a hospital and we have tackled that issue and I will let you know. He said, okay, that, that, if that's the case, then it's okay. So that's, the, that's just the best that he could, he could have told me. If I could talk about bullying, there was a time I actually had asked him, you know, I told him, you know, we can't keep jumping schools like this. If there's a problem with you or with the school, I need, I need, we need to fix it. So I asked him, have you been bullied? Um, my, most, my, my chief concern was about especially sexual violation since I work in that area. And I know men don't talk about them sexually, when they've been sexually violated. And so um, I just wanted to open up that conversation and told him that if that had ever happened, I, I would be open to, you know, seeing to ensuring that, um, first of all, we seek justice. And secondly, that we get him, we ensure that he's got peace of mind. Just wanted him to have peace and, and, and to, ensure, to ensure that he's got holistic healing so that he just doesn't burn internally from the peer pressure of being a man and not being able to, being able to open up. So from the fact that um, maybe somebody had made him think that he's a woman and maybe because of the environment he's grown up in because his dad died when he was one year old and he'd grown up in a very feminine environment. He's got two sisters, he's got me and then only one brother who is younger than him and then um, um, the, the, the sister. So I didn't want him to feel emasculated in any way. And then, yeah, oh, that's an, a, an explosion. You might have heard it. That was the power again. And so um, I didn't want him to feel emasculated. And so this, this bullying thing, he didn't answer me. So at, at one point, I almost remember he wanted to turn and, and answer something. Then he just scratched his head and, and walked away. So I thought to myself, was that a good sign or was that a bad sign? Did that say something to me? But you, you know, when somebody doesn't want to open up, you can't force them to open up. So I'm willing to think that that, and, and, and when he never gave me a reason for why he didn't want to go back to that school, um, I knew that there was a problem. I knew that there was a serious problem. And later on, that school was one of the um, national schools actually that started out the burning incidents, burning the, the four two boys that used to burn, burn schools just before exams or because they hate the headmaster or the diet is bad of the dead woman. I think even in one or two incidents, one of the issues was about the school prefects actually having more power than even the teachers themselves, that even prefects could actually punish children in public, and their, their, their colleagues in public. And um, what is, he was called the school president. Yeah, he was called the school president. And then the school president had much that much more power. Um, and and you need, the, the, that power had been donated to him by the school principal. And the, the school principal, his word is law. And so these people could, um, could easily abuse anybody and they just just come out um you know nobody would be any the wiser about it and the school system would not be would, wouldn't open up maybe teachers would even be scared to talk about it um maybe coming up with proof would be it, it would be difficult maybe they would say that your son or your child is in discipline and um that kind of thing is actually what stops even um um survivors uh, of, of bullying from even speaking out, because somehow you feel that you're emasculated when you talk about the when you show your vulnerability, when you show that you are, you might have been less of a man, or just, you just you're not the sort of person to fight back or battle, or you just that's you, that's just not your makeup, that's just not how you're made, and so you might bear the brunt and just burn and 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 feel and feel pain internally until you just decide to end it all, and um, that that's just my take on issues on that issue. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, Jackie, I'll keep taking you back to this story, you know, back and forth, because there are some things I would like to get out of it. And as it is established, there was bullying involved in your son's story. Yes. As a parent, did you at one point think, I should have read the signs and I would have done something about it? Absolutely. It tears you apart. It tears you apart. Um, I usually call them the thoughts or the sins of omission or commission. What I should have done and what I didn't do. Um, what I omitted to do and should have done and what I did do, which is maybe just come down hard on him, maybe not uh, understanding and appreciating where he was coming from or what he was going through. Or and First of all, I, that, that's my only boy. That's my first son. I don't have... I, I know... 
how girls behave in boarding school my girls are not they, i've never had a problem with them they went to, through boarding school very easily uh, we didn't really have problem they, they managed whatever it is so perhaps him as a person his coping skills were that much more difficult as so i thought to myself that i should have realized this i should have done this you know those thoughts every little thing just becomes a bit more clearer after somebody has passed away and you realize when he was doing this this is what he must have meant when he when he went silent and 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 didn't want to talk to me and this is what he must have meant and there are also instances you know they really have serious mood swings and it become extremely difficult to manage um i would come home his way of showing love and appreciation to me was putting on specific music for me to listen to so that when i come i just sit and relax and i'd go to the kitchen and i find and ask oh, i had left this here i wanted to eat it when I, when i came but who ate it i ate it he was that kind of person you can't leave anything there he will eat it he was that kind of person and so when you when you notice that he's just not eating then you wonder what's going on and so when i there are days when he would come and he would put on a, a particular album of a certain nigerian um, music um he put on uh, manu dibago because i like the trumpet he put on um, asa uh, you know fire on the mountain things like that and a whole album and it would relax me and i'd walk around the house and he wouldn't talk to me but he would just do that just to show me so i i learned to read his actions just that much more um and 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 then in the sense of omission is what i didn't notice when those changes not taking action when i noticed that there were changes when he started withdrawing when he didn't want to take a shower or would take a shower and then and 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 then leave the water on forget that he's left the the, the heater on and leave it running and just walk out of, of the bathroom and just go to bed and you know you'd come and start calling with him because he's just left the water running he's left the heater on you know those those kind of signs it and um, after he's gone is when you do you just kick yourself that he might have been trying to say something or maybe you might not have created the um, an environment for him to open up um those are the things that cause so much grief and so much pain because you think i should have done this he might be alive um he might be an example he might have, you know he might have just completed i don't know you know he was a artsy sort of person he liked to draw and doodle draw things writing things he was a composer um composing names and, and and things like that and so um i the power has just come back and so uh, when that happened i um uh, the pain you know that that's that's really the cause of the pain because as a parent you have created the environment for for a child to grow for a child to to flourish and if that doesn't happen then you also feel a failure as a parent you blame yourself on things that you could have done and didn't do and things that you did do that you shouldn't have done uh, exactly um just like my viewers i have very few words tonight but let's just see who is saying what in the comment section okay. and i hope you can stay strong for us to finish the conversation I'll quickly go to the conversation uh, happening in the comment section. Thank you so much uh, Edukwe you for being here Norina Mbata and uh, yes we have Anlu Masai and ja- Nancy Magen thank you so much welcome to the show Kipro Roda Haki Safari to go live you say Don Gilbert I don't know what to even say cuz whatever I'm going to do to that bully and i think this is a conversation we actually need to have because most of the oh, time Mom, jackie I, what I, I, is, i said it just wants to change the the, the bulbs okay you take your time as i go through this uh, jackie thank you so much for everybody that is joining us we are doing a conversation or rather having a conversation with uh, jackie mujere who lost his son thank you to bullies So for everybody that is sending in their comments I hope uh, you can follow the conversation in the comment section and I hope uh, Jackie you're fixed once you're fixed we we'll let you come back but meanwhile let's go to the conversation that is happening here uh Andrew Masai I see your reactions there Nancy says there are no words um Catherine Osita says take heart take heart dear you are a loving mother and a caring one 
hugs to you. Thank you so much, Catherine Osita. We appreciate you. Gordy Sejero, one of our producers, says, this is really sad. Whitecliff Gaddafi, on the other hand, says, Artinhat, this is so emotional. I'm sorry I can't keep on watching. And I totally understand you, sir, and where you're coming from. Um, we have, again, Andrew Masai say, this is so, this is just too painful. And we all understand why, because it's a story concerning a very serious lifetime outbreak. Um, heart in heart team, you also need counseling. This session are just very emotional. <laughs> yes, uh, Lumasai, we, we, we have our people that are working with us. Thank you to responding to live. She's doing an amazing job. She's doing an amazing job with us. And yes, we have a full package, including James Murphy. Uh, Nancy says again, uh, it breaks my heart listening to this story. Uh, Leo Siongue, that is Ed Okweyu, so sad indeed, Kibet Tanui. Uh, Kevin Tindi, I have heard this story a number of times, so sad, yes. And you know, there's no story that grows old, especially every time it's delivered and you get to understand the context. And thank you, Tindi, because it means you care about these people. I hope to have you soon on this bench. I hope uh, Jackie is ready for us, and if she's not, we're going to take another quick short break so that we can allow her to rejoin the stream. And for everybody that is joining, remember this is Art in Heart. And the program on right now is against all odds with Jackie Mutero. We'll be right back after the break. If people are actually having mental instability, there's a lot of cases of depression, a lot of cases of suicide. We are supposed to mm -hmm. speak about it. We are supposed to talk. We are supposed to create debates online and even out of uh, social media with people and ask them, how can we deal with this? Yeah, Because I think artists are the most depressed people, if you ask me. And I say this because I am an example myself. Yeah. But if we have these platforms, you realize that um, uh, if I'm talking to you like right now, it is therapy mm -hmm. for me.
Hello, my loves. This is Victoria and Kata from Responding to Life. First and foremost, I'd love to thank each and everyone who has been supportive of Responding to Life ever since you began our work. Responding to Life aims to empower, inspire, and motivate lives. And this we do all across our social media platforms, especially on our YouTube channel. Now, our vision is to be of impact to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives, where we aim to move from a negative mental state to a positive mental state. Thus, our focus is on mental health and daily life issues. Our mission is to identify issues that concern the youth especially, but all other individuals, and be able to be of help through counseling, through videos, and much, much more. So stay connected and let us know how we can be of assistance. And also you can be of assistance by keeping your Yes, my name is Lukviani Eli, and of course we are back Ma, as we continue with the discussion tonight on Against All Odds. We are talking about bullies and uh, the effects of bullying in our schools and at home. Uh, let's go to the comment section before we can get back with our guest who is trying to rejoin the stream. They are having a little bit of power cuts here and there. Uh, Lumasai says, the problem is we are never seen. I mean, the problem is we are never seen, but through such we learn to be keen with our children, family, and friends. Just so sad. Um, Nancy goes ahead and says, all kids go through a difficult time in their life. And as a parent, we don't always see the red flags because they don't want to talk about it or worry us. Interesting perspective, Nancy. Thank you so much. Uh, Tindy says, as a practicing counselor, there are many marks or pointers when someone is about to commit suicide. And Mama Chichi has spoken about some. We can also be m monitoring on people's behavior. Unusual change of behavior speaks a lot. But I want us to have further discussion here, everybody that is watching. Why is it that it becomes a normal thing, especially in our society, once you're bullied, you actually feel the reason to bully the person that comes after you and most of the time it happens in schools especially who went to boarding schools like me i'll tell you for a fact once you join the first year of high school you become anything except human i remember there was this anthem that we used to be told to recite and they will tell us a form one is there to be seen and not to be heard anything and everything they say is irrelevant and remember, a Form 1 is there to be seen and not to be heard. You serve at the master's pleasure. And the master happens to be your school captain. The master happens to be those elderly, I will call them elderly because they are old. At the time, they were really old students that are in the, the, in the pro progressive years of school. So why is it we have normalized? bullying in our schools that's a question i would like for us to actually answer to in the comment section as we wait for jackie to actually rejoin the stream the other part of it that i find a bit disturbing is do you think or do you believe family units play a role in molding bullies in the society what role does domestic violence play especially physical play in propagating the traits of bullies in other children you'll find the fact that this child i'll call them children because they are underage they decide to become unruly and most of the time they are expressing their dissatisfaction of what society has given them by harassing those ones that they are not able to defend themselves. And as a result, the trend becomes normal. So does family issues actually contribute to this as a fact? Do you believe these are factors that needs to be addressed? So let's talk about dysfunctional families. Let's talk about the fact that we have normalized bullying if you go to New Year's in, in a university, the same, same traits happen. And the society decides to look at it as normal. 
Numasai says, I think most bullies are normally frustrated, therefore pass their frustration through bullying to the weaker ones. Most of them are frustrated and therefore their only way to show out their disaster, the, the frustrations is to bully the weaker ones that are actually in the same unit with them. I am of the same school of thought. I can say that, that behavior can be learned and learned and reland. We do so in the environment that we are in, whether family, school, even work. So people can learn bullying from family. Wow. Thank you, Pastor T. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, who else is here talking to us and what they're saying. Yeah, people have decided not to talk and rather to listen, but Thank you so much for those contributions that you're giving us tonight. Uh, unfortunately, we are really unable to rejoin, to rejoin uh, Catherine. So we will bring you the rest of the interview on the YouTube channel and make sure to continue watching because we always have something for you every single week. So again, I bring you this. Hello, my loves. This is Victoria and Katha from Responding to Life. First and foremost, I would love to thank each and everyone who has been supportive of Responding to Life ever since you began our work. Responding to Life aims to empower, inspire, and motivate lives. And this we do all across our social media platforms, especially on our YouTube channel. Now, our vision is to be of impact to hundreds of thousands, if not millions of lives, where we aim to move from a negative mental state to a positive mental state. Thus, our focus is on mental health and daily life issues. Our mission is to identify issues that concern the youth especially, but all other individuals, and be able to be of help through counseling, through videos, and much, much more. So stay connected and let us know how we can be of assistance. And also you can be of assistance by keeping the motivation train moving. See you on the internet waves. Um, I just received a good call from uh, our guest. She's planning to rejoin the stream, so it's not yet lost hope. Catherine Osita says, in some schools, they have normalized bullying, uh, and, it it, and it looks like a school culture. When from once join schools, boys' schools, that is, in this case, they are told to harden up like grown-up men. So the culture continues and teachers do not do anything until the worst happens. Let me tell you something, Catherine. It's strange that it becomes a culture, but it's a culture that is cultivated from the administration. When things go south, they will actually hide and make sure nobody hears anything to do with whatever happened. I know case in point, where a school, very known one, the teacher decided to administer corporal punishment on a particular student until they were oozing blood. And they were sick in school for two weeks. The school never reported the case. The school never contacted the parents so that they can actually have this child treated. And the school never said anything about what had transpired, including who was involved. Until the school closed, that is during the corona season, this particular son goes home and the father notices there was something unusual with his back because he didn't have his vest on. There were lashes, black marks all over his back so deep that you could tell that was a violent criminal thing done on that child. So even as we address bullying from the students, I don't know what you will call this from teachers and especially administration school, I mean the school administration that decides to sit on such a heinous act as if nothing happened. My other question would be, who should be held responsible? Is it the teacher that instigated this? 
or is it the administration that decided not to report this issue? And yes, I'm speaking facts, and this is an issue under investigation. Zena Hussein says, if you bully your wife or husband in your children's presence, they learn from you. That takes me to the role of parents in the family. What are you doing to your children? by showing and exposing them to violence. Do something positive to teach your children because if you show your child it's okay to slap their mother in front of them and you as a mother, if you show your child it's okay to throw food on the faces of, your pa of, of their father, then don't expect any better because they can be only as good as the trainer. Kevin Tindy again says, imagine in a family setup, the child sees the father beat up the mom like a snake. Kichapo chaumbua, they will say it. The child can either grow up to become a bully in this manner when he gets to a place that he or she sees they can dominate others. Thank you, Kevin, for that. So, how do we conclude this? My conclusion will be, it is unfortunate we had to lose Chichi in such a way. It is unfortunate that the mother will never understand how it all started. But it's equally unfortunate that as a society, we decide not to talk about things. Rather, we prefer to react. Every time something happens out there, we all are up in arms until the morning comes and it's a forgotten story. Every time, we hear issues to do with bad leadership, we'll only complain until there's another bad leader again in place. But leadership doesn't exist in a vacuum. It starts from somewhere. It starts from the homes that we take care of as stewards. It starts from the roles, the simple roles you're given, like, you know, raising up a child. And it's not an easy job, especially for a mother that has been widowed a mother that now has to play the single role of being a mother and equally doubling up as a father and have children that look up to him, uh, up to her rather. Let's not normalize things that are not normal. So before we say goodbye, I believe it would be in order to allow Jackie to just say something to us. Jackie, I hope you can readjust your camera so that we have you on screen. <laughs> yes, sorry again, ladies and gentlemen, for that miss. And Jackie is back with us after such a long detour. I think her flight went to Ethiopia and then came back to JKIA. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, we had a power blackout, so I was just trying to reconnect on the on, on, on a clearer device. You can see I'm still trying to set myself up. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, just, I just need to thank you, um, especially for just giving me this platform, because um, and um, the reason I also agreed to speak about it is because I wanted to remove the st stigma. And there's something that I write usually even when I'm asked to speak somewhere about, um, excuse me, about the subject matter. I said um, I feel I felt so much pain, and I still feel so much pain. There's no. There are no tears. There are some good days and some bad days, but there are some that are some very difficult days, especially very difficult days. But I speak because, first of all, I want to remove the stigma around the suicide. I want to remove stigma around uh, parents who have lost children to suicide because somehow somebody would blame you and say that uh, you did not bring him up properly. 
yeah, you did something. Like I was telling you, the things that have the most of the sins of um, the acts of omission or commission, what you could have done and what you, sh you should not have done. And then also stigma around the person who died, you know, that they are selfish. I wanted to, re I speak because I wanted to remove that uh, concept that somebody was so selfish that they decided to, they decided to, to, to just f move their lives. I think <clears throat> the boy that I know, if he would have known that this would have been the kind of impact he, he would have left, he would not have. He would have tried at least to reform, but I, I acknowledge and I accept that that is the way he opted to go and that was it. I also speak because I want to decriminalize suicide. It seems it's 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 so ordinary now and because uh, initially when somebody said that it, if it's an attempt, they take you to jail because they did not know that it was a mental health issue. So I speak as a mental health ac activist saying that I, I speak because now you you need to start rethinking that strategy of, of uh, taking people to jail or, or for, for, for better for better for better management. Um, if it's an attempt, it's an attempt review. I speak also to make um, society and communities aware on the impact of what society is doing to our children. And as we're tackling the subject matter of bullying, that you might not see the effect now. Uh, and based on people's coping skills, coping mechanisms, personalities, characters, experiences, socialization, things will happen. I tell you, you can never ever believe what will happen. You know, people think that suicide is a joke. I tell you, it's not a joke. The day, and I, I say this when I was there, I can't tell you how many bodies came in. And the day we were leaving, going home to bury my son, I cannot tell you the people that were also there. As we left at five, there were people there also waiting to take their sons home and their children. And from then, I've also met so many parents, parents from South Africa, from, from Ireland, from, from as far as Serbia, from Australia, from America, from, from all over the world. Australia, talking about the impact of it, the impact of suicide, uh, thinking that uh, I'm, I'm so brave. You know, it, it's, not, it's nothing about bravery. It's simply having the ability and God's grace upon you to be able to articulate an issue. It's simply that. It's not that I'm different from any other mother. There are so many mothers who are in pain. In fact, many of them call me after they realize um, and they tell me I'm going through such, I'm having such a bad day. What can I do? What do I do? You know, I don't have answers. Early, I don't have the answers. Every situation is so, so different. It's so, so unique. I must end by telling you two specific stories that I always refer to, actually three. Um, one of them was a, a mother in South Africa, in Lesotho, actually. Her son, she actually bumped into her son looking at some, some material. And the boy felt so guilty that he actually ended his life. But he was, a, he was an introvert, okay? He was an introvert by nature. And so this mother used to feel so much pain and so guilty that she could she should have defended or or done something else or done things in a different way. So she climbed on onto um on the place up to where her son had hung himself just so that she could feel that pain and absolve herself of the pain that her son felt. She never she didn't she didn't do anything wrong, but it was just heartbreaking to experience what she perceived to be the pain her son felt to the extent that he went to that extent. Then there's a boy in Kenya here in Baringo, who has become a son of sorts. Because from my story, he calls me and he writes to me every day and he tells me, mom, today I'm feeling, I'm woken up very badly. And we just go, you know, you, you just unpack what very badly means. He's an A student. He passed with first class honors in the university. He's done, done some biotechnology, some bioscientific, earlier the one who likes calling Kizungumingi. He's got it. He sits in the village. He's got no hope. I think he's 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 in the he's either last one or somewhere towards the end. And um, he he's sort of like he's remain he's remained in the home. His siblings are very elderly, are bigger people, and his mom is suffering. He has has, has got a, some terminal illness, and he's so stressed. He's applied to so many jobs with his A certification, an A plus student, if there's such a thing. And he doesn't get a job, and he's just he can't, he's not even chairman of a cattle dip in his area. And he, he said, There's nothing. I said, Isn't there? Can you start something? You know, God has made each of us so differently. If you're academically inclined, you cannot be told to start a business, you can't do it, you can't make it. Not everybody's an entrepreneur, not everybody's an entrepreneur, and not everybody's an artist. 
some an, an academician you give them a paintbrush or you ask them to start thinking outside the box and and they don't they just simply don't have the creative skills so some of the pressures that society is putting on us and and, and on the children and and on deliverables is also what is uh, what what might be pushing people to 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 the end that they feel that they are unable to manage and they cannot cope anymore and definitely rather just at all and finally to give a uh, victory story of a young two students one was a young girl who attempted to say severally which was the last one in the family her mother died her, her, both parents died and she was the young, youngest one and um, they were separated as children after the parents died and then she went to live with an auntie a relative whom mistreated her finally advanced left out and she attempted to say several times but she found it out but through writing through writing her story and she be, she's very, extremely creative and she's a wonderful girl and she went to university <clears throat> and right now we are actually about to launch that book where she talks about the trauma that she experienced and the and the various stages that she she went through to her process of healing up to today and then there's yet another campus student at Parkless University a girl also who is also writing and writing her story it seems that um, the the more situations are so different but academics they they so there's such a high demand on children there's such a high demand on the youth to deliver or to be in a certain way or to be a certain person that it goes beyond your normal capabilities and your normal reflex reaction such that you you're strained to such a, an extent that you you want you'd want an easy way out you gave us statistics and um and you've quoted even the 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 the, the Nairobi law the the, the Nairobi uh, periodical that gave the statistics but if you look even globally to the world health organization statistics suicide is also a number 4 killer number 4 apart from covid apart from hiv aids apart from cancer then you come to suicide isn't that something that needs to be discussed surely surely and you know the um, i i also speak because so many um, people don't want to speak about it it's a scary subject i agree i acknowledge it's really scary and extremely painful but if i don't then who will good night everyone if she doesn't who will if we don't who will tell these stories that's why we do it on us in heart and again it's all odds in conjunction with responding to life i want to take this opportunity to just ask all of us to take a moment to say a word of blessing to this lady as she pursues her course to actually bring a difference as she tells the story of her son at the same time take this moment to remember congo Eastern DRC, the people they are suffering thanks to the Niragongo volcanic eruption that happened just a day ago. Um, you might not know how lucky you are until you run out of luck. I need you to remember that. At the same time, as Art in Heart family, we are actually in a grave moment because we lost a very close associate the parent to one of our associates died just the other day and we are in the moment of grief so we are asking you to stand with us as we pursue this soon enough we'll be publishing a few publications on how you can be of help to us so i hope you can come through for us as a family because we believe in family that's why we do what we do and last but not least it will be a disservice to all of you to let this story just slip like that because i know you wanted to hear more from jackie i guess what we have you sorted because right after this we'll be doing a special cover on what we did so enjoy for the rest of the evening have a blessed uh, night jackie and thank you so much for coming i hope to see you and have you another time as we discuss mental health awareness throughout the month of may thank you very much ellie I do it to honor my son's memory. Thank you very much. In for honor of his platform. memory, God bless you yes. for us. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Till next time. As always, my name is Likuyani Eli. Have a great, great week ahead. And remember, I'll be meeting you on Tuesday in the men's den. And on behalf of our producers, that is uh, 
God is a Jero. On behalf of also our producer, Kiari Kimani, thank you so much for making it our graphics. Mwema um, Nzomo, our marketing team, Noreen Ambata, of course, Kipro Road and not being forgotten, even as we go through this period of mourning. We just want to tell you we love you and we care about you and every other person responding to life, uh, Kara, Rahim, and let me not forget, Nyanduko 254, see you on Tuesday as we hang out with James Mwathi and Gilbert Pakumere on the men's den. Till next time, have a great night. My name is uh, Jackie Mutere, Jackie Nami Mutere. Um, we do got Joanne, and then we got Stephanie, and then Jerry the late, and then I've got two other, uh, two other kids. But um, I, I, I speak and I normally say that I have got five kids uh, because I, it's simply difficult to remove the memory of him or just to eliminate him to say that I've got four kids and one died. But um, I have five kids and uh, Jerry, we're going to teach each one of them. Uh, uh, growing up, he, 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 was a, one, he was a wonderful boy. Okay, I must admit he had a bit of a, I had a difficult birth with him, but that's not to say anything. But um, uh, he grew up well, a normal prankster boy, just the, the normal boys that, uh, that grow up, uh, antics, dogs, um, cheeky stuff, uh, he was, but he was basically a prankster. And so uh, that, it, it came out in many of his uh, activities, in his actions, in his in interaction with us. Um, but um, he started changing when he went now eventually to school. Uh, he went to Form 1 and I think he didn't adapt very well in that school. Or, or maybe something just happened, and of course, as a parent, you wonder uh, this is your first son, uh, your only son at that point, who, wants, who you want to go to school. And um, he changed schools and he, he changed schools again. And then after he changed school, I, when, he, when I went to visit him again, I found that there was a change, and um, he was very withdrawn. He kept calling me all the time. Um, but this, the school was a bit strict, so he, the, the calls were not very regular. But when he did come home, I noticed that it was a bit difficult for him to, to want to go back. It became and um, it became more and more difficult for him to want to go back. He'd delay for any any reason. I don't have shoes, I don't have this, you have done all my shopping. And so that that was basically his mom. And then after a while then he, even that school it became difficult for him to uh, to go through. He one time he just came home and he simply said, I'm not going back to that school. And uh, I wondered why. He said, he said um, there are things that are going on, I'm, I'm just not going back there. And um, I realized he had changed, his personality had changed, he was much more withdrawn, he was, he was his normal happy self, a normal happy person, but there was just some subtle change in, in him. And um, because I wanted him to go to school, I said, okay, fine, you must finish your education, so let's look for another school. So eventually he went to a third school. And in the third school is where now I actually noticed a change and he was reluctant to go to school. He just felt he, he, he would, he, he would, um, he, would um, he would take more time at home because now this was a day school. The other, the other two schools were boarding schools, mm -hmm. but this one now was a day school. And um, he attended to wake up motivated and go very early. At times just wouldn't want to go and I tried pushing him. And when I push him, he becomes very upset. It became an issue. So I decided now, you know, I sat him one time, sat him down one time, I told him, you know, um, the results are going to be yours. This is now for four. And shared with him, I told him, you know, your, your, the results are just your own. So whatever effort you put into it, it, it is just going to be your results. So don't blame anybody um, when the results came out. And he, he, for, he, for a time, two days, wouldn't go to school. He'd, he'd stay at home three days, go to school two days. The following week, he goes to school three days, stays at home two days. The other days, he goes, home, he goes to school late. So it became very difficult to, uh, to, to, to even to communicate with him. Um, and so because each time, it, it, it became a quarrel each time we, uh, we talked or, or I raised issues or we tried to challenge him. Mm. And maybe at this point, I'd also just like to tell parents perhaps who have also gone through this, um, this process, that you know you do, do, you, you do due diligence as a parent. You, do not, you don't need to fear a child that the child will do self-harm to themselves because of your parenting. It does not say anything about your skills because you know your child, you know your son, you know, you know your daughter, and you just do the right thing by you and you do the right thing by God, uh, and you do the right thing in, in, in the name of being a parent. So you don't, you're not, don't be scared 
to even discipline a child or to rebuke a child or to give a child direction because you're scared of one thing or another. But of course, this is also to say cautiously that you realize when there's a change in your child. Notice and, 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 and act on it because this, the, the, the current generation is very different from how we grew up also. So notice the change. And so thereafter, of course, when the results came out, he hadn't done very well at all. And he was initially an extremely bright boy. <coughs> he would head his class in, in form in Saturday. He got in, uh, he got um, three eighty something points um, in his exams, and then uh, he went to a, to a good school. But then he just started slowing down. He was somebody who was the, a brilliant. Uh, he was an analyst. He actually wanted to do um, a, a psychology. Psycho he wanted to do something to do with psychology because he's somebody who liked to understand things, understand people. He would observe things and observe people, and you know. He was he was really brilliant brilliant in, in, in that aspect, but I realized that he he had just no mind to do things. But when he did his exam, he came home and said, "Mom, the exams are okay. Um, I, I think I did well." I said, "Okay, let's hope for the best, or whatever it is." Because now this was one of the good days. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that he used to go through good days and bad days also. Um, really fluctuate in, in personality, and so now I just you just learn to to go with the flow. Um, <clears throat> if you notice, um, most of the cupboards. Um, they, they don't have um, glasses because we'd get into fights. And he broke every single thing that belonged that had a lot of glass. And I just, I don't put any glass on them again because again, it will just remind me again of, of what caused them. Um, if you look at this door, this one <coughs> up there, there's, um, we had to re-weld it because he, we were in a fight and then it, literally because of the power and the force that he had, he removed it from the hinges. <coughs> Same to the front door that you came through. He also, because we were throwing him out after he wanted to, he wanted now to beat his sister. He became very violent after a while. And he might have gotten upset because I'd always defend the, the sister. And the sister is a, a slim person, young person, he did not have the physical strength to challenge him. And so he, he almost became a bully to her. But um, in retrospect and in thinking about it as, <clears throat> as a family, we've come to realize that um, they were the closest. They grew up together, they were so close together. They go to school together, they walk together. So we are thinking that perhaps um, he was hating out to her because he probably felt, we just, this is just a personal uh, family analysis, that uh, we, we think that since they were so close together, he must have felt that she didn't understand him, yet she was the closest to him, and why didn't, why didn't she understand? <clears throat> and on this other side, the girl, blames herself that she didn't understand and he, they were the closest together. Um, and, and, and why didn't she understand him? So she also, after the fact, uh, we all actually just hit depression also together. And so <clears throat> as I go back to Chichi's school days, um, after, he, after the, the results came out, he went downhill. Um, he just really went downhill. He withdrew um, in, in, in his room. Of course, we'd get into more fights, quarrels, and and um, a lot of conflict, and um, and uh, a lot of verbal conflict, and uh, of course, words were thrown um, at him, words were thrown at him about his results, also, and maybe those are the sort of things that personally, I, I personally think that might have taken him down that hill because he just now started withdrawing, he didn't come out of his room, um, he kept um, sleeping. Uh, then he'd come out, and when he comes out, he'd sit, he'd sit in this, this particular place and, uh, you know, just, you know, slouch, you know, didn't really care what would happen and, and um, just sit and watch him and, and then he'd complain that his ribs were aching, you know, he's got a headache and I tell him your head, your head is aching because all you do is just, you're, you're sleeping, you're watching movies, you're watching stuff online, you're on your phone, you're on the computer, so of course your head must ache because your eyes are aching because you don't sleep, you don't rest, you don't have time to give your body time to rest. And then again, he would just withdraw, and he was somebody who had a very healthy appetite. Uh, he wouldn't, um, he would eat very well, he had good portions. And then I started noticing that he wouldn't want to eat, uh, he'd eat less than he would, he would take, he'd, he'd, easily get, um, he'd, he'd easily get satisfied, or he'd come and sit in the kitchen, and then I'd ask to serve him, or he'd just come and sit next to me and just be quiet and um, tell him to move, he doesn't want to move, <coughs> want to sit, and just do crazy stuff. And, um, he really turned and, and he just became somebody else and his personality just came and became quarrelsome all the time. Uh, <clears throat> I'd ask him, during normal circumstances, and tell him, 
uh, come and sit and eat with us here. He would, or he'd come take his food, and in his underwear. As somebody who's previously very, very private, uh, somebody who takes care of himself, take his food and, 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 and then go back to his room. Uh, or times we used to have a dog uh, that was his, it was his pet, together with my other son. We'd sit in the corridor, sit in the dark. I told him, you don't have to sit in the dark. Come and sit here with us, sit in the light. And he just opted to sit in the dark and in, in the corridor in the evening. And so those are some of the changes that we noticed. Um, it's the most undignified, the most painful, 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 painful sight any mother or any parent would have to see the child being transported in the back of a police truck because of, uh, because of suicide. And the suicide that is caused by depression. It was really to realize that uh, he had gone, he was going through a period of depression. And um, he just kept digging, digging himself into a hole that he couldn't come out of, you know. And the, it gets darker uh, the, 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 the deeper that you go. And it becomes more difficult, just that much more difficult to come back up. So he, he, um, we went, at home, eventually that that morning, early morning, he, he went, during the the period of um, morning, it took us about a week to take to ensure that we went home. My father in law came, my sisters in law came. Um, we started we planning we were planning for planning for the burial, um, and then one of the days, my my one of my dear dear friend of mine uh, went to view because I told him that um, if we were, told his friends. Uh, but if they're willing, they could have gone to view. So I organized for a day for, for them to view him. Um, so the friends came, and my, my one of my colleagues came. Uh, I somehow just didn't have the strength to go to the mortuary. I just didn't. I couldn't. I didn't have the strength to go to the morgue. I, I, it, it freaks you out somehow. Something happens. It just freaks you out. There's just a. It's it's almost unreal. Mm -hmm. But um, my friend told me. Um, don't worry, Jackie, the boy is just sleeping. Very handsome boy is just sleeping. I said, okay. Uh, gave me a bit of um, gave me a bit of comfort. Went went home. Uh, we buried him. And then after that, uh, we came back home to the reality of life without him. And this is one of the most important phases that uh, perhaps people also don't talk about is because um, uh, parents might... Um, Children or, or the late person might feel that he has gone, thinking that he's relieving you, or he, he might be a burden to you, and that he's relieving is gone. Mm. But ultimately, he becomes, you know, the, the, he feels that perhaps he's he's, he's removed himself as as being part of the problem, and so you you let people live in peace, or perhaps get rid of whatever pain that he was experiencing personally.